Lesson 26, part two. And first of all, here's a correctly drawn diagram, unlike the one I did, which was, uh, as I said, sort of an epic fail with that center one, but um, not the best I could do in those circumstances, apparently. Uh, so that's, that's what a good one looks like. Now here, you should know this little chart here. There are three options for your magnification. The image can either be the same size as the object, as in plane mirrors, or it can be enlarged, larger, or it can be diminished, smaller. So now in previous example that I did in the previous lesson, it was larger. The attitude can be erect or inverted. So if your original object is like this, and your image is like this, it's the same, same orientation, we call it erect right side up, and if your image is like this, then it is inverted or upside down. In terms of the type, real or virtual, for mirrors, if the image is on the same side as the object, we call it a real image. If the image is on the opposite side of the mirror, as in plain mirrors, we call it a virtual image. And then make sure you... you uh, Read this. It says real light rays and images are drawn as solid lines, but virtual light uh, rays and images are drawn as dotted lines. And we'll get to we'll do some examples of that so you understand what that means. Okay, so let's try in that previous example, we put the object in between the center and the focus. Let's do one. Um, center, focus. Let's do one this time where the object is on the other side. So let's do the object right here. And we'll follow the three rules. Um, use the first two rules if possible. They're probably the easy ones to use. So the first rule is very easy. Parallel, light ray goes parallel. If it goes parallel to the principal axis, then it reflects through the focus. Second rule. If it is the opposite, if it goes through the focus, it reflects parallel. Where those two lines meet is the image. And we'll put over original or object here. Okay, so that I did a uh, not bad job on that one at all, actually. So you the characteristics of this image are. One, it is inverted, it's upside down. You can see that it's a little smaller or diminished, and it's on the same side as the object, so it's real. And this one, if I do my center rule, let's do my center rule here in red, it's actually probably going to work. If that goes through the center, yeah, look at that. It'll hit the mirror there. And hits at a 90 degree angle, so it reflects back on itself. So, yay, I redeemed myself on that one. The center one actually does uh, uh, look pretty solid there. Okay, 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 let's do another one. Now, so that one was smaller. The one where the object was here was larger. Where the object was here was larger. What about, uh, what do you think would be if I did it right here? I don't want to do a whole example of this because I've got other examples to do, but you probably guess that it's actually the same size. If I very quickly do, I'll just do them in blue. If I do my rays here to this one, I know this is going to look like a total mess when a fish, but I just don't care. It's like that, and then through the focus, like that. Oopsie, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. See, you, you'd see that the image actually appears directly below the object if it's at the center and it's the same size and it's inverted okay so that's if it's on the center what about if it is on the other side of the focus here so let's do one like that and that is a very interesting one center focus so now we're going to put the object here and we're going to apply the rules. Rule number one, parallel goes through the focus. So parallel goes through the focus. 
Now, rule number two in this case is a little trickier, so I'm going to I'm going to go to rule number three just to make it things easier. Rule number three says that it, if it goes through the center, if it goes through the center here, it reflects back on itself. So this hits at a 90 degree angle, reflects back on itself. So it goes this way. But at which point you go, oh no, this is tragic because these two light rays are, are diverging. They're going further apart. They will never meet. So where's the image going to be? Well, this is where the dotted lines come in and extrapolation comes in. You have to extrapolate these lines behind the mirror. So this green line here, we go, and then this red line here, and we go, and oh, look at that. Amen, they meet right here. And look what we have now. What are the characteristics of this image? Well, it is the right side up, so it's erect. It's clearly larger. And it's on the other side of the mirror, so it's this is a virtual image. Right, so here's where our dotted lines and the concept of virtual images comes in. When I uh, have the mirrors here, I can demonstrate it, but this is where you want to watch some YouTube videos. All right, the only one we haven't done, and is one, one of the more interesting ones, is what if it's on the focus? Let's do that. Center, focus, here's the image. The image is going to be on the focus. So I'm going to follow my rules. And then center. Back on itself. I've tried to now. This is a very interesting case because. I've uh, drawn this fairly well. Those lines, they appear to be parallel, don't they? And in fact, they are parallel. So they're never going to meet on this side. And then if I extrapolate, whoopsie, oopsie, oopsie, they're never going to meet over here. So in other words, the what image is going to be produced if you have an Im, um, the object on the focus? No image. You don't get ooh, got the A there. You don't get an image if the object is on the focus, on the focal point, which is super interesting and accounts for blind spots and things like that. Um, so that's the other case that we could uh, do for concave mirrors. Okay, we're going to stop there and then we're going to do convex mirrors. So this will be, this is 26 part two, and then we're going to have a 26 part three.